Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV2. The main talking points on tonight's programme. Rangers prepared to offer new manager a three-year deal. Referee Willie Collum in the firing line as Celtic maintain their unbeaten run. Scott Brown highlights the threat to players' safety at football matches. Yeah, just a few of the talking points we will be discussing on the programme tonight. Uh, Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin. I'm delighted to see our book room guest tonight is the legendary broadcaster, Archie McPherson. So lots to talk about. Let's have a look at uh, the morning papers, those back page headlines dominated by uh, the two games last night. Uh, first of all, the Daily Record and Callum's conned column. This is a reference to Callum McGregor winning that late penalty which salvaged a point for Celtic and kept their unbeaten run intact. And at the top, uh, Graham Murty, we have set a standard after their 3-0 win at Rangers over Aberdeen. The Sun, again, Conor McGregor. And this is reference to Andy Rose slamming uh, Callum McGregor for the late penalty that uh, Willie Collum awarded Celtic and uh, Murty's bar set so high. The mail, we were robbed again and of course it looked as if Motherwell were going to be the team that ended the Invincibles run but it's 66 games without defeat and the courier just at the bottom there ignore the frustrated fans and concentrate on the message from the manager that's Shaba Laszlo to the players and as you can see the Reds response required on Sunday when Aberdeen will once again uh, take on Rangers this time at Pataudry uh, a chance for revenge after that emphatic win for Rangers last night we'll look at those goals uh, shortly but of course uh, the main talking point has to be uh, the AGM it was the perfect opportunity for Rangers fans, shareholders uh, to get along and make it what could have been a difficult morning for the Rangers board, so many questions that uh, they were keen to ask about the appointment of the last manager, uh, the finances of the club and the most important question, who's going to be uh, the next manager? So all those questions and still no answer on the manager other than the fact that Dave King and the board have highlighted, Archie, that the new man will be offered a three-year deal and the candidates that they're choosing from some of them are actually in employment at the moment. Exactly. Uh, I'll tell you what, Peter, if ever a game helped that AGM, it was the game last night at Ibrox in the 3-0 victory. Had it been in reverse, they were going to be in big trouble. I think it placated a lot of people. Um, but it should not have stopped the, pro the, 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 the probing into why on earth Kachina was appointed. Uh, why is it taking such a long time? There's a simple answer to that for two reasons. First of all, they could not possibly make such a comical error as they made the last time. And secondly, and here in what he said about some managers being under contract, that seems to indicate they couldn't buy anybody out. They simply don't have enough money to buy anybody out. And, and consequently, they'll have to wait. Um, uh, beyond that, uh, I think the fact that Rangers have come out with a uh, an explanation over the longer term of what happened in the past and what is supposed to happen in the future has dampened the temperature down within the AGM. The, you could say, for example, um, yes, the, the, the chairman has said that this was a, a corporate decision about Katsina. Yeah. But corporate decisions also come from individuals who have a stronger pool than others within a committee or whatever. Yeah, I think and he mentioned it? that. He, he said that they've overstated and it's been unfair criticism of, um, you know, Graham Park's involvement mm -hmm. in the in the selection process, which is what I think you're alluding to. Well, I think, exactly. I think you're having to say, well, who, who actually pushed this stronger than anybody else? Because they made a blunder, a colossal blunder, which isn't just about one season. It's about several seasons because mm -hmm. Rangers, next year, next summer, will have to recast... Uh, the team again, because some of the players they brought in just simply uh, are not good enough. Uh, but on the other hand, if you look on the plus sign, they have a young man now in McCrory who's a very decent player. A lot of promise, 19-year-old uh, player. Nowadays, I suppose you might say, well, they're 19-year-olds and even younger playing all over Europe. Yeah. But remember, he's coming into a club 
that's had uh, a terrible time of it. So there's a big pressure on, on, on him, himself. And he performed like a, a very good professional. And that's promise for them. Yeah, a promise in McCrory that is probably, you know, the one or two shafts of light of optimism, mm -hmm. uh, Ruffy. But I think a lot of Rangers fans will have, uh, you know, left the AGM with a real sense of frustration and still a, a little bit of anger um, at the fact that it's taken so long mm -hmm. to get a manager and still no sign, although, you know, Dave King mm -hmm. and the board have said they're getting closer. Yeah, no, I think Archie's right. You know, football being football, you know, we all talk about if you get a win, you know, it changes things. It doesn't change things that much because no. obviously supporters still want to know. I think the decision will be when they actually tell the supporters who the manager's going to be. And then the, the supporters will judge themselves whether it's a fantastic appointment or not. Yeah, but I don't, I don't see any great value, Archie, in highlighting that the next manager will be offered a three-year deal. You know, to, to give everyone a sense of you know, calming things down and this is a forward-thinking plan. You know, sure. managers' contracts are not worth the paper they're written on if no, you don't exactly. get results. Exactly. It's all about who they pick. That's the most important thing. Whether you get so, an 18-month contract or a six-year contract, it's whom they're going to pick. That's the most uh, important aspect of all. And, you know, people keep asking me, bump into the street, well, who's going to get a job and so on? I, I just don't know. There's, there is no... I mean, you keep talking about uh, McInnes at Aberdeen. But that, that seems to be spinning out uh, into nothing, into a void. Uh, and I can't think of any e easy replacement or outstanding candidate. It's loose in the game just now. And if they're talking about a manager under contract, well, there are hundreds of managers out there under contract, so that doesn't narrow it down yeah. uh, even then. There's so a lot of old uh, Rangers legends throwing their name in for this one because I think the driving force is stop Celtic winning 10 in a row. Yeah, well, they have to get it right. You know, they made a t terrible blunder with Kachina and uh, everybody knows that. Uh, the supporters certainly know that. And it should... The only thing I would say about that, Peter, is th they should have fastened on to that much earlier. Yeah. I mean, even, even going back to Luxembourg, they must have realised that even before Luxembourg, when you saw the way they had tackled Celtic, uh, thinking that with the players they had, they could beat Celtic when uh, quite abundantly clear they couldn't and therefore should have been much more defensive and so on. Yeah. Uh, these things uh, you have to take into account and there'll still be... Uh, that game last night helped a lot, I'll tell you. Yeah. But there'll still be a lot of dis dissatisfaction. Well, there's two other elements to it, Ruffy, which I think um, are worthy of <coughs> our um, discussion before we get to the goals um, for... Uh, the game last night at Ibrox. One of them is, uh, when will Rangers be self-sustaining again? This was a mm -hmm. question uh, from one of the shareholders to the board. And, and Dave King says, it'll only happen when the club is competing in Europe regularly again. And uh, with that, the funders will continue to do what is necessary. Now, that reply would not have filled me full of confidence because that is based on the fact that you don't know whether you're going to be able to sustain, you know, European football. Get it. How do you get it? You get it with a good manager. You get it with regular results. You get it with a better quality of player. I mean, that that is the great unknown, that answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was a, a, a real big disappointment this year when they got beat so early on, mm -hmm. you know, because obviously Rangers, like all other clubs at the start of the season, they have meetings, they have budgets, they budget for where they were going to be in the cup and what money they're going to bring in and certainly playing in Europe would have been one of them and that was taken away for them so very, very early. So it's okay saying that, you know, but again, I keep going on about the supporters. The supporters have piled money into that club. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You no, know, year on year, you That's know, a season asset. tickets. And then, yeah. but if you're a supporter and you're piling in all that money and you're leaving these people in charge to do what they're going to do with that money and then all of a sudden they're getting hit with soft loans every year and if you're a supporter you're saying well what are you doing with my money you know yeah. are we putting yeah. players on wages yeah. that shouldn't be on are we mm -hmm. you know spending too where is all the money going that we're playing yeah I, I, I think um, <coughs> Rangers in the past their heritage has always been triumphalism they were always winners yeah they won every they won something every year okay there might be a couple of years three years of a kind of lads with the back winning trebles and so on and the supporters have been brought up in that tradition. Uh, I remember, for example, Annan Athletic coming to Ibrooks and winning 2-1, I think it was. Yeah. 
in front of 45,000. Two weeks later, there was another 45,000 there. So that is a huge asset for them. But you'll know Rangers supporters beginning to say, well, just how long can I cope with this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just on that, Ruffy, the, the chairman admitted that the, the sale of Barry Mackay he was undervalued at half a million pounds. That mm -hmm. The board has to sanction his sale in the first place, so that was another mistake. And the one thing that really concerns me is, you know, some Rangers fans putting forward that they want to s you stop Celtic's huge ticket allocation for the game. I think once we start, you know, yeah. taking away fans and reducing the numbers when they are there willing to mm -hmm. go to a game, the ball's burst. Yeah, it certainly is. And, and as soon as you do that, if you restrict the Celtic uh, tickets for Ibrox, then Celtic will restrict mm. your tickets for Parkhead. So the, the supporters are the ones that are losing out. Yeah, OK. Um, after the break, we'll look at that match that was a, a real bonus for Graham Murty. Rangers win. The goal's coming next. The Arsenal Invincibles 2004. They're talking about Manchester City potentially emulating that feat. There's a long way to go, but last-minute goals always help, uh, especially if it gets you a win. We'll be talking about the English Premier League a little later on in the programme. We'll also be discussing Hearts and Hibs coming together in the capital city, all for the... Uh, um, all for the love of Christmas, I'll put it that way. We'll discuss how Anne Budge and Leanne Dempster came together uh, today for what is a heartwarming initiative. That's coming up, um, but let's look to the goals at Ibrox. Rangers 3, Aberdeen 0. Here's how it all unfolded. Um, I have to ask you, uh, first and foremost, is it a penalty, Ruffy? Yeah, I think it's a really clumsy challenge by the defender. You know, although he pulls out of it, yeah, I, think, uh, I don't think the referee had any doubt at all that... Uh, he was going to have a shot there and he's just stopped him for shooting. And Tavernier just comes up, smacks it right down the middle. It gives you that huge bonus early on, Ruffy, um, and gives the whole crowd a lift. Yeah, I've, I've said it all along. You know, if, as far as Rangers are concerned this year, when they go behind, they struggle. <laughs> when they go in front, it gives them a bit of confidence. And you can see this by the second goal. It was a well-worked goal. Two, two or three, one, twos. Pena just peels off and just side foots it into the side of the net. And uh, I think Derek McInnes will be extremely disappointed in the way his team started that game. But uh, Rangers just capitalised it on the end. Another good goal. Don't know why Tavernier gets himself in there, but he's in there. We touch him offside, but uh, the referee let it stand. Yeah, uh, here's the tackles. Yeah, I think it was Brian Christie, second tackle. It's a tackle from behind and he catches him. I don't think there's any malice in it, but it's uh, it justifies a yellow card, I think. Yeah, um, if anything, um, the bonus is... Pena gets a goal, he's still not doing enough for me, um, no, Archie. No, in the hurly burly of Scottish football, particularly if you think, if you project yourself forward, performing like that, even though he had some nice, neat touches and scored a very nicely taken goal, yeah. in the hurly burly of an old firm game playing at uh, Park End, he wouldn't be in it. I don't, I don't think he would be in it, unless he's getting fitter and fitter as he goes along. Because notice in that game, he was still caught in possession a lot. Yeah. Uh, there's no doubt. He has skill, but it's not just a case of having skill. It's got to apply yourself, particularly in the Scottish game, throughout the 90 minutes. Yeah, uh, well, after the, the match, the interim boss, Graham Murphy, said that win should set uh, the benchmark for the rest of the season. I'll always be confident in the players. It's down to them to go and perform. We, we've set a benchmark and a marker down, but it means nothing if you don't go and back it up. So it's another different game. We have to make sure we wrap them up in cotton wool get them ready to go and perform again at that standard because it'll be a tough, tough game. Um, I don't imagine for a moment that Aberdeen will take that result lying down, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. That's just one good game. This club's been built on decades of great games and that's what we aspire to be. Yeah, well, the Rangers fans will be hoping it's not a, a, a false dawn um, because usually they get one game, two games and then mm -hmm. lose a game. Can't get the, the, the three mm -hmm. and it's up at Pataudry 
Yeah, on Sunday. Yes, it's another tester, isn't it? You know, I think anybody going up there, whether it's Celtic, Hibs, Hearts, you go up to Pataudry, you know you're in a game, and I'm sure <laughs> Derek McInnes will be extremely disappointed with that last night. Mm, and yeah. I think the I thought the, the players, defense was poor, rough. Yeah, yeah I oh, thought yeah. it was. Mm-hmm. I thought I thought early on, you know, they looked slack uh, and not like them. Uh, but let's not forget. Motherwell beat them 2 nothing up at Pataudry mm-hmm. a couple of weeks mm-hmm. ago, so maybe there's something Derek has to work on there. You know, maybe they're just not concentrating as much as they should. But no, I think it'll be a good game. Uh, I think Aberdeen will be a different Aberdeen. Yeah, well, as far as last night's concerned, the Don's boss, Derek McInnes, says they got what they deserved. We got what we deserved. I thought the first half, the initial start of the game, nobody spoke about trying to keep the crowd quiet or get on to the... Um, Bring pressure onto the Rangers players uh, after the couple of results we've had, you know. But we gave them complete opposite, gave them a lift, you know. It was an unnecessary penalty giveaway. Got to show more restraint there and awareness, and it, it helped get their crowd into it. And I thought the end Rangers players were brighter than us. I thought they showed more energy in the middle of the park. I thought they won more headers. I thought they were more aggressive. Um, everything I expected from one team, to be honest. And people say the third goal. Um, 2-0, 3-0, it doesn't matter. It's such a poor decision for a linesman. He's a couple of yards offside when he puts the ball in the net. Um, you know, we were the victims of a poor decision on Sunday and it didn't really matter then either because we win the game anyway. But, you know, the lines, like these linesmen should be accountable for such poor decisions. 2-0, 3-0, it does matter. You know, it doesn't matter in terms of the points, but um, I felt it was harsh on us to lose the second half. Um, and I thought we were better. I thought, we, as I said, took more responsibility. Um, Mackay Stephen gets injured and Christie gets his, uh, gets his cell sent off foolishly. So it wasn't, the, um, it wasn't the greatest evenings for us. Uh, it was a sore one and we just need to dust ourselves down and hopefully, to say, um, have the reverse on Sunday and get the right result for us. Well, I'm not quite sure if that third goal matters or it doesn't matter um, to Derek. I think it matters when you're a manager of a football team, you know, you, you don't like getting beat in, but I mean, to the third one just sort of rubbed it in, you know, that, uh, and they have to deal with it and the players will have to deal with it. But as I said a couple of minutes ago, I think Derek McInnes will have these players fired up, you know, and, I mean, you see a side of Derek, you know, it's very nice and that, but I'm sure there's another side that we don't we don't see and I'm sure the, the players will come out fighting and the weekend. Yeah, you say they'll come out fighting. Is there enough steel in that side? Is there enough steel? I mean, I've yeah. seen Aberdeen sides before, and I'm talking a long time ago. This is, this is not a great Rangers side. So suddenly they were able to break a long mm. hoodoo where they couldn't get a win at Ibrox. I think it was 1992 the last mm. time they managed to get a win. So they got that monkey off their back. They should have been going down there to Ibrox with a, a determination, Archie, a belief that they could go there because this is a Rangers side coming off the back of uh, another poor result. I, 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 I mean, if yeah. ever there's a time for them to be there for the taking, it was last night. I well, didn't uh, think they had it. I did notice in the game a, a characteristic of what has happened to Rangers since the start of the season. You remember the first game against Motherwell? Motherwell looked a good team in that game and I thought they were very unlucky uh, not to get something out of that game because like virtually every game Rangers have played this season, they seem to have fallen away in the second half. And even though they were quite the superior team to Aberdeen, even though they absolutely deserved to win, even though it was a much better performance than against uh, Dundee or Hamilton, again in the second half, Aberdeen began to put the ball together again yeah. before Rangers got that third goal. Could I, I can imagine what I see in his mind. He saw much more productive play from Aberdeen in that kind of 20 minute spell before the third goal finished. Yeah, um, of course James Tavernier got a couple of goals, he's hoping this is the, the turning point in Rangers season. Um, you know, it, it was a must win game you know, um, hopefully this is a turning point where we do kick on because you know we, we, we've we obviously had that tendency to go two games and losing the third game throughout the season so we, we want this this level of performance to con, um, to keep continue so we can't let the levels drop we just got to continue the levels that we put in today. We we have to kick on and get the po- all the points that we can. You know we've dropped too many points this season, and we have to we have to catch up and win every every possible game that we can.
Well, that's about the players doing the business on the park, Ruffy. Although you had an interesting uh, meeting with a Rangers fan who maybe painted positive. A, a positive picture. Yeah, very positive. Uh, he obviously looked at the the Hamilton game and the Dundee game, and obviously they didn't win these games. But if they had won these games, he was telling me there'd only be a point behind Celtic. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's what supporters are like. They yeah. always like to be positive, but we'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see. I think he forgot Celtic had a game in hand. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, nice of you to remind him. Um, over and above that, of course, Aberdeen at Pitodry uh, might be a different proposition. Uh, Graham Shinney says the Dons players have to right the wrongs of last night's performance. Um, yeah, everyone's is gutted um, naturally after a performance like that but um, like I said there's no better game to, to come round than, than this one on Sunday and, and I think the motivation will be there to, to right a wrong um, and do a lot better than we have tonight. When I read one of the players saying that you know Aberdeen will finish second, I think it was one of the Dons players said they'll finish second, um, I thought okay back that up, you know I, you know, I don't mind players being confident some bragging a little bit of bravado but you have to back it up well, I, I've, uh, I didn't uh, keep count of the number of cards there were last night. It was a red card and umpteen uh, yellow cards, which suggest the referee on Sunday is going to have his hands full. One, Aberdeen will be determined to right the wrongs, as uh, he was saying there. Um, Rangers know they'll be up against it on a much narrower pitch and, and, and so on. Uh, and if the referee doesn't impose himself in this game, it, it, honestly, I hope not, it, it, it could become quite rough. Yeah. Um, just as a, a little side issue here on this, it's a positive note. I noticed that the, the, the chairman, Stuart Milne, is confident now that they'll get the go-ahead for, mm -hmm. for Kingsford. I really hope they do. I, I, I want to see Aberdeen in a you know, cracking stadium, state-of-the-art training facilities, and for, it might not be Derek McInnes, but some manager uh, you know, at Aberdeen is going to benefit mm -hmm. from being able to recruit players with that in place. Yeah, and so will the players as well. There's nothing better than turning up at a fantastic complex. And I think, I just can't, I can't understand why it's been dragging on so long. This is a community club. Mm. It's the only club in the city, you know, so why wouldn't you support it? Why wouldn't you support it for the community and, uh, and move on? Yeah, yeah. I, I can tell you, I was up in Aberdeen at the Dennis Law dinner. Yeah. I remember he got the freedom of the city and I spoke to some of the councillors uh, and they're very confident this will go through. Yeah, well, um, that'll be good news for Don's fans, certainly good news for Stuart Milne and the board have been campaigning for this for so long. OK, after the break, it's Motherwell Celtic. A catch chance I was going to get that one to be honest with you Ruffy I don't even remember Old Yeller but you do Oh I definitely remember Old Yeller Tears streaming down my eyes as I watched it at the end uh, Yeah, Very sad film <clears throat> And of course um, just showing off that you had a telly in <laughs> 1957 as well um, Let's uh, move on to uh, a game dominated I think this morning by anyone who watched it on uh, television wanted to see the highlights of Motherwell against Celtic this is Motherwell against Celtic take two after obviously uh, the League Cup win for Brendan Rodgers side a wee bit of needle in this game but this was a world class save Archie oh yeah superb I mean uh, I wonder if they seem a, a lot of the players in one on one seem to hit it straight to the goalkeeper but Alan's more accustomed to that than I am. Yeah. But these are, he had a great night. Obviously. Yeah, Trevor Carson if was magnificent. If he's saving like that from <coughs> all sorts of different angles, then he's something special. Was it a penalty? Not so sure. Um, I had a look at it last night. He, <laughs> even he wasn't uh, claiming for it. But there again, when your luck's in, it's a great ball in. Lustig puts it in his own net, Ruffy, and suddenly people are starting to believe that the, the run was coming to an end. Yeah, people are starting to look at their watch and, and counting down the time and then obviously McGregor picks the ball up, another good save. 
Uh, I think the goalkeeper would maybe be better letting the defender header it, but this is the other debatable one. How much contact do you need before you go down? I think if you look at McGregor's face, I think he's a bit uh, stunned by the whole situation. I've just got one question. Right, this is this is what's this going to take it, us this all is the way the, to the this break, is the, This is the one. Well, obviously, let's finish with Sinclair. Great finish, superb composure to come up and win this one. He had taken pelters through the game as yeah, soon as he came on as a sub. And, and that is just quality, you know, to have the ability to just drill that into the top corner. And again, you have to give Celtic all the credit, you know, for for fighting there. But the question I have, and it's a referee's question, and I'm sure you'll try and answer it. One, McGregor went off the park. Correct? Yes. If you get a chance to see it again. Right. He goes off the park. Uh-huh. If he comes back on the park, surely he's offside. If he immediately comes on the park, on the line, yeah. he's offside. Yeah. If, if he's if influencing I'm correct, the play. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, he was because he mm -hmm. went on the thing with him. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it, funnily enough, uh, far be it from me to defend subsection 5, paragraph yeah, 3 yeah. of that rule book on it, mm -hmm. At the point where it was happening, it was all so quick. But for me, the crux of this, Archie, is I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the press box and I'm mm. looking, I'm thinking, did Celtic deserve to lose the game? The answer is no. They had chances um, and, and they had a lot of the possession, as they often do. When Mother get the goal, albeit fortuitous, I thought they were going to hold on. Well, if I had been doing a commentary, I would have question the decision of the referee, I have to be perfectly honest. Yeah. From that commentary position up at Infer Park, you look down on it, you have a good view. I only saw it through television, uh, as I saw the Rangers game the other night, purely through television, and sometimes you can get a distorted view. It didn't look a penalty to me. Yeah. Leaving aside, and I hadn't noticed that, the fact that he had gone off the park and then very quickly come back on it again. But the initial contact itself, no, it didn't look like a penalty. Yeah, um, I've looked at it several times. Some people have actually sent me texts saying they've looked at it and they think it's a penalty. On the night, I thought it was soft. I, I, I mean, softer than the one at the weekend. <coughs> mm -hmm. um, when I Willie get... Collum <coughs> pointed to the spot, Ruffy, I, I, I looked and I thought, no, mm -hmm. it's not a penalty. When I looked at the replays last night, and, and again, you know, the general manager, Mother will come out and slowed it down and said, is this a penalty? And mm -hmm. you've seen it from Celtic TV's perspective. Mother will looking at it from their angles. And I've looked at it again. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it's not a penalty for me. And in the end, Celtic get the goal, which I think, Overall, their play yes. merited, but yeah. you don't. Motherwell fans don't want to hear a referee gifting Celtic no. a goal. As many a person will tell you, they're tough enough to beat at the best of times. Mm -hmm. Never mind gifting mm -hmm. them a goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, for me, the 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 big word in the whole situation is contact. You know, as soon as somebody says, "Oh, there was contact," but nobody's dis disputing there was contact. But is there enough <laughs> contact? to fall down the way That's that the players are falling yeah. down the road. <clears throat> exactly. You know, I could push you in the back mm. and you would, I would think, nine times out of ten, still be on your feet. Scott Sinclair one I can get because he's running at pace yeah. and if you're touched. But this one, he's <clears> running <throat> away from goal. The player goes in, he's just sort of a shielding them out and the player goes down. And I, I, again, I think Billy sure. Collins... There'll always be controversies about penalty kicks, especially if they come in the context of something that's historic. Yeah. In would other have, words, they, they would have stopped Celtic's great run. Yeah. Would a video referee have helped that situation? Archie? I'm not sure. It's a tough it, one, isn't it? No, 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 no. I, I, I'm not sure. I remember we were part of an experiment, or we tried to have an experiment in the part of the France when I was with Eurosport and put uh, monitors around the pitch and we would stop the play. The, the FIFA just wouldn't allow it, not yeah. even an experiment. But then you look at some, some of these things that they use in rugby now, they're still highly debatable, even yeah. though it goes back to the video referee. Yeah. Uh, but I think we're working on percentages now, aren't we? We're trying, to, we're trying to get it to the point where you say, well, instead of, you know, 60% and 40%, and which is yeah. a mistake, which creates the big pub it could. On the other hand, I wish it had been. Yeah, I wish it had been put into the test. Yeah, and that, sure, that's the th that's the point we don't I, have that. And I'm sure Willie Collum would have preferred it to go yeah. to the test. Yeah, because yeah. all of a sudden he's the one that's made the decision. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, Callum McGregor was the man in the eye of the storm, um, which managed to take the heat off Scott Sinclair uh, for uh, his apparent misdemeanour uh, earlier in the in the week at the uh, cup final. But here's what Brendan Rodgers had to say about Motherwell being angry. 
Yeah, no, no, they've been angry about lots on Sunday. They seem to be angry about everything. Um, no, I think that, again, the keeper makes a great save. We should finish it. Ball rebounds out. The, uh, the player makes an attempt to get the ball, but Callum steps in front, gets his body there, and uh, he knocks him over. So, and, and if you look at the referee's position, he's, he's in perfect position to give it. So, uh, so yeah, I, I thought it was a penalty, but, uh, but of course, when you're the opposition, then you probably think it's not. Yeah, well, Brendan Rodgers thought it was a penalty. Stephen Robinson, uh, we tried every which way uh, we could to get him to comment on it. I'm not going to talk about the decision. I want to talk about the game. Two um, good teams. They're both trying to win the game. You know, um, Celtic had a, a lot of chances, so did we. Trevor Carson was outstanding. Um, let's talk about Alan Campbell's performance, Chris Calvin's performance, Kieran Tierney, Scott Brown, because there's some quality performances out there. Let's not talk about the refs. I can't control them, I can't change it, but it was um, a terrific game of football. I, I'm going to make no comment on it at all. I'm not going to make any comment at all. I'm going to talk about how good I thought we were, how much we bridged the gap. Um, and we got about Celtic again and, and perhaps if we had 11 men on the pitch on Sunday it might have been a really good cup final Yeah, OK um, He probably mm. went into a darkened room mm. and just started like thumping response, his head I like that response though, Peter It's a very good, healthy, civilised response yeah. by him and he has done a, an excellent job with that, with that club There's no question at all about that You go back to the, the point you made earlier about Celtic deserving to win both the cup on Saturday because of the the dominance in the game, even though there was a controversy about penalty and the controversy last night, but you've got to abide by the rule. There will always be teams overwhelming opposition and something happens that prevents them from getting the win. Uh, as, as you suggested about that game last night at Fir Park. Um, but then you've got to abide by good refereeing, by accurate refereeing. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure there's a majority of, of the Motherwell fans, in fact, I would go as far as 99% of them um, are not Willie Collum fans after his performance last night. Um, and what about the players? What do they think of it? Andy Rose was having none of it. I mean, he's gone down. I think it was really, really soft. Um, you see players going down in the box all the time, and obviously it's happened to us twice in a week now. Um, with four minutes to go, I think it's a massive, massive decision. Um, obviously, people have different views on it. For me, um, there was no intent whatsoever to, to bring the player down. Um, like I said, I've seen it back. I really think I just planted, planted my leg and he's just sort of, um, I mean, I've barely felt a touch and, uh, and he's gone down. Um, I think if anything, he, he runs into me. Um, could have easily stayed on his feet. Uh, didn't and on, obviously it's, it's cost us a massive result. Yeah, um, so that's the player's perspective on it. The referee made the decision. It finished 1-1. Uh, of course, Scott Sinclair came in to chat about the week that he's had because he was vilified for being a, a diver, but um, I don't think it affected him too much. I think I'm always calm. Um, you know, I'm always focused um, when I play the game and um, it was all about composure. People are there to, to criticise and and um, it's up to them what they say. But I've moved on now and I'm just concentrating and looking forward. Well, that's you know that's up to all the critics. It doesn't phase me. I concentrate on what I'm doing and, and like I said, I I just concentrate on my game. Yeah, I mean, he, he took a fair bit of stick last night, Ruffy. Mm. I think players thrive on that sort mm -hmm. of thing. But he scored the penalty. It was a brilliant penalty. But I don't think he's as good as he was last season. He's still to hit the heights this season for me. Oh, there's no doubt about that. You know, I think uh, <laughs> Brendan Rodgers has identified that and uh, has started sort of uh, using him a wee bit sparingly. Uh, but all credit to him in the, in the year, he was absolutely tremendous. I think he played every game. And in every game, he was outstanding. And it doesn't matter who he is. Who you are, it's going to take you toll eventually. You need to take a break, and mm. uh, and that's what I think they seem to be doing. Well, um, obviously I haven't seen all the games, but I was at the final on on Sunday, and every time he had the ball, there was menace. Yeah, I felt you know any time he made forward moves, I thought there was a an apprehension in the ball of uh, defence, uh, because of his use of the ball and his manipulation of the ball, he's still a very good player. Yeah, okay, more to come after the break.
was right. 1961, and I don't know if you heard in the background there, um, but the great thing about our programme is when somebody nails it, they're happy, and Archie's a happy man at 1961, <laughs> right on the button um, for Archie McPherson. So a, a good point gained there. Um, just a, a couple of things uh, out of that Motherwell Celtic game that I think are worthy of comment. Obviously, there's a blow, Ruffy, with um, Patrick Roberts' hamstring recurrence of that injury. He could be out until the, the new year um, with the hamstring. But... There was a one other worrying aspect, which is not just about Motherwell Celtic, it's about other games. Scott Brown is one of those characters that I think riles fans up and down the country. Um, if he's not um, playing in the green and white of Celtic, the rest of the fans really, he's their, their main focus of attention. There were some missiles thrown last night, and I think it's something that he has warned uh, and highlighted. Um, you're getting hit with coins, mm -hmm. you're getting hit with objects. It's not just Scott Brown. Some fans are stupid. And, mm -hmm. and and to think, I'll throw this at someone and it could seriously injure them. Yep, mm -hmm. I think people, uh, supporters have to be aware that a coin is a very dangerous object. You know, if, uh, I mean, obviously there's a lot of people never been hit with one, but if you are hit with one, particularly you about your eye it. area, mm -hmm. uh, it, could, it could be serious trouble. You know, and I think people have to be aware. It shouldn't be throwing anything anyway, but uh, I mean, coins in particular, uh, are the, one of the most dangerous things that you can throw at somebody. Yeah, uh, and again, you know, the police can do uh, only so much, Archie, with CCTV and the likes, but, you know, some of these people are, uh, they think they're clever about it, but, uh, you know, for players, not just Scott Brown, mm. I, I don't think there's any excuse. Whether a person is, you know, a, a character that you love to hate, mm. the villain in a match. Oh, no, it's the, fairly the, obvious you don't want that. Yeah. It's all about self discipline. You're, you're talking about uh, players' discipline. Uh, the most effective way is the club to discipline their own players. When it comes to supporters' clubs, then there should be some entity that demands that if something like that happens, and it's very difficult to determine who does it, Alan. You know, when you're throwing mm -hmm. a coin, uh, it can be easily done. But if, if anybody... Uh, no supporters club would encourage that, but to take the opposite route, discourage it. Somehow or other, they've got to discourage it. Somehow or other, they've got to educate people into thinking they're bringing scorn on their own support, for example, uh, in doing things like that. Because yeah. Mother will get no credit for an idiot. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm not just talking about Mother will, any other club. Yeah, absolutely. It happens all over, but it's, it's uh, good of... Uh, you know, the captain of Celtic to highlight it for the safety of the players. And uh, again, maybe uh, if you see someone doing it, you would out them for it because it really is uh, a cowardly act. OK, from there, um, let's go to the capital because um, Neil Lennon confirmed that Anthony Stokes had been uh, sent home. Training ground bust up seems to all have been rectified um, mm -hmm. and peace has been made. Uh, that will allow him to be available for the game against Partick mm -hmm. Thistle at the weekend. Yeah, well, unfortunately for Anthony, I think he's obviously got a, a past record. Uh, I think when we all seen him going to Hibs, we thought Neil Lennon would be the man uh, to put an arm around him because these kind of players do need somebody like that to just pull aside, have a private word, tell them how good they are and the ability they've got and their worth to the team, you know, and to cut out any silly stuff. But unfortunately... Uh, every individual's different and it looks as if he's, he's caused trouble again uh, on the training ground and, and Neil's obviously reacted to it because football's not just about one person. It's not no, about, it's not. I, I don't care whether he's the, the best player in the side, sure. it's about sure. another 20, 25 guys who you've got to look mm. after as well and, and you can't be seen to be, you know, just privy to one, you know, so I think Neil's handled it very well. And what do the supporters think? Do they want some of the best best players? It's happened through the years, some of yeah. the players, you know, bust ups. Um, and a manager has to decide whether this man's going to be available for us in a crunch in a crucial game. But at the same time, has to maintain standards. Mm. His his own standards of respect for him. Uh, and I don't know what the bust up was, obviously. I don't know how serious it was. Well the, <clears throat> the manager won't elaborate on it, he just says it's been it's been cleared up. But I think so. Supporters are wanting played. 
Yeah. The Hibs supporters will want him to play on mm-hmm. Saturday, that's but I, for sure. But I think he needs to play. I don't think he just needs to play, Archie. I think he needs to play and start scoring goals oh, oh, because uh, this uh, is where uh, Hibs are, are coming a cropper. Yeah. Score one goal, can't score two, can't finish teams no. off. Oh, no, he's got to play better than he would. He would ra- the, the supporters would rather he were there, regardless of what... It, I mean, if he had punched the manager in the face or something like that, then obviously that goes above... Uh, the manager's head yeah. for but the club to take, but I don't know what happened. It's, ama- it's amazing if the if the manager doesn't act quickly enough, then they, then he's got a dressing room. Yeah, you know, it, it's breaking up. You know, because it, we point. don't know what it is. You know, but yeah. if it is one or two people he's had the confrontation with, then you get that festering in the dressing mm-hmm. room, and yeah. then it festers on into the park. But Neil's dealt with it and dealing with it quick rather than letting yeah. it go on can make it a lot easier. Uh, although um, I'm sure you'll all agree if um, Anthony Stokes had punched the manager in the face, the manager would have punched him back. <laughs> 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 it's a stonewall certainty. Um, it's Patrick Thistle against Hibs. It's a big game for Thistle. There are three or four games coming up in the month of December. Alan Archibald, uh, first to admit that this is going to be a huge month for the Jags. It's uh, a month where some of the results could determine whether they're going to be involved in this relegation uh, playoff or relegation itself or indeed starting to look towards the top six. Uh, this is what Alan Archibald had to say about the game on Saturday. Yeah, look, I, 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 I expect me being good for them. They were really good at Hamilton. It was probably one of the best performances I've seen at Hamilton in terms of a team playing against them because I think we all know that Hamilton's a real competitive place to go. They make your life really difficult but um, they were very good and created a number of good opportunities so it'll be a stern test for us. Yeah, um, I think we were playing, where, where was he speaking there? Um, mm-hmm. Did you recognise it, Ruffy? Yeah, I think it's up at the University of Glasgow, mm-hmm. just up the outside uh, Mary Hill. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, they've got games, I mentioned the games to you. I, I'm looking at the next four, yeah. Hibs, um, Kilmarnock, Motherwell. Done three points. <laughs> <laughs> so, so twelve points. So twelve uh, points. What about Celtic? Would they just take them? Take a draw, not settle for a take draw. Take a draw, right? <laughs> Four big games, though. I mean, you would look and you'd say to yourself, "Hibs, come on, Motherwell, Dundee, okay." You know, they're, they're, they're achievable, the points, getting the wins, but I, I, I uh, think Hibs and Motherwell are a different category uh, for Thistle. Is that, when you're in a position like Party Thistle, no disrespect to them, all games are big games. I saw them against Motherwell at Fur Park six or seven weeks ago, and immediately after, <laughs> at the end of the game, I walked down thinking, they're, they're going to be relegated if they play like that. They were very, very poor that day. And then suddenly they got a momentum going again, uh, obviously, I don't know too much about Archie, but uh, um, he seems to be able to get a pattern of stability again. You know, they, they fluctuate, uh, they look as if they're going to be go- going down, and mm. he, he revives them again. So, you know, you never know. They'll pick up some points from that. I, I, I'm a big fan of Alan Archibald, as you know, um, Ruffy. I, I just think good coach, thoroughly decent person, good man manager as well. Um, I don't see them. I don't see them being uh, relegated. I'm, mm. I'm not going to tip them for relegation. No chance. No, I don't think so either. I think obviously he's had a lot of injuries right for the start of the season. I know a lot of other clubs have as well, but he's had some important guys who who have been out. But uh, you know, he's got the ability, and the board know he's got the ability to pull it out when it matters. And uh, there will be a like these fixes you're talking about. There, he'll be looking at them and. That top six isn't that far away. Look at Hamilton. No, Hamilton no. have had a couple well, of good results. Just about to say that. And they're, yeah. only, they're only five points away yeah. from Partick yeah. Thistle. So it just shows you what happens if you can get a couple of wins. Well, the, 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 the candidates for going down are beginning to narrow and narrow because of Hamilton. Yeah. I mean, Hamilton, in all the predictions and all of the papers, you know, in the first day they said they all predict who's going to be relegated. Well, Hamilton's name was there in virtually every new newspaper pre- prediction. Yeah, here's but the table, But look at Archie. what they've done. Yeah, I mean, the bottom end is so tight, five or six clubs. But um, look at Hamilton now, that's what I'm saying. They were the, <coughs> uh, the bookies bet, clear favourite to go down. Yeah. And now, look at where they are, just a point below Hearts. Um, and the, the gulf between Partick Thistle, five points in it, uh, between them uh, and Hamilton, which... Honestly, that does surprise me because I was one of those who thought that Hamilton would struggle. Maybe not go down, but certainly finish in the bottom two. Yeah, I can't let you guys go without uh, waxing lyrical about 
Wayne Rooney's hat trick. I mean, his third goal, Ruffy, I've just got to tell you. I mean, it was sublime. It was a stroke of genius. Mm -hmm. Well, I was watching Sky Sports and I heard Paul Merson trying to describe it. And uh, he, he, he had it up with there with every best uh, shot he's seen yep. in, in oh, his yeah. career. And it was, by all accounts, a wonderful strike. Yeah, it's uh, a stroke of genius. And um, if I have to tell you once, or I'll tell you again, yeah. uh, you just keep watching STV2, <laughs> Ruffy, rather than Sky Sports. You need to get your finger out and, yeah. and understand where the wages well, are coming maybe from. Maybe if there was a sports channel on later on, I'd watch it. Yeah, well, if you... <laughs> if you Listen, if you're not careful, <laughs> they'll have us on later on as well and then we'll never be able to go out for a Christmas party. Yeah, true, yeah. So you need to have a long hard <laughs> think about it. Anyway, it was a stroke of genius and uh, yeah. that's the type of thing that gets fans uh, talking and leaving football matches raving about uh, great skill from Wayne Rooney. OK, thanks to Archie McPherson. Always love having him on the programme from Ruffy and myself. Thanks for watching. Good night.